The Cube Stereo Hybrid EMTBs have made a massive splash this year. In America, they are some of the only EMTBs that come with the Bosch Generation 4 motor and a 625 watt hour battery. Add to that a full fleet of full carbon frames, suspension components that don't go below a RockShox Lyric fork, and you have got some of the most badass enduro bikes that you can get on the market. We previously checked out the Stereo Hybrid 140 Cube bikes, so today we are going to check out the Stereo Hybrid 160 Series. These enduro bikes are going to be great for those that want a little bit more of an aggressive feel from their EMTBs. Cube is a boutique brand still, so you know you are getting a high quality build. They are still built in Germany from their factory that produces about 3,000 bikes a day that is acoustic and electric bikes and are still relatively new to the American market. So let's check out what Cube is offering for American riders this year. The Cube Stereo Hybrid 160 HPC models are the most aggressive Cube EMTBs this year. Flyride's got to test ride all three models that are coming to the States. Your top model is going to be the Action Team with Kashima coated everything. Below that, you've got the TM model that is foxed out as well. But don't sleep on the base model, the SL, which still comes with a Lyric fork. All three models are built with an aggressive 75.5 seat tube angle and a head tube angle at 65 degrees. This geometry, along with 170 millimeters of travel in the front and 160 in the rear, makes them excellent for descending. And if you're looking to jump, they are great for that as well. Maybe the most impressive thing about this bike is that you compromised almost nothing on single track playfulness. You are still getting very short chain stays at 441.5 millimeters. This means that going into corners and again that single track playfulness is just going to be so much better on one of these bikes than on most other enduro models. As I mentioned, you are getting the Bosch Gen 4 Performance CX motor, along with a 625 watt hour battery, which makes the fire roads and climbing in between runs way more enjoyable and ensures you have enough battery life to last you all day. A little bit more on the frames, you do have a full carbon frame in the front and then the rear triangle is an aluminum build. This helps compensate for the extra weight of the 625 watt hour Bosch battery. I really like that they did this, it uh, pretty much is coming at no cost to you either. The bikes are largely the same cost as last year. The top model, the Action Team, is coming in at $79.99, and the entry level is going to be $54.99, that is the SL. So hopefully at this point you are feeling like you have a good idea of what the 160s offer. Let's check in with Hector on the GoPro to see how the bikes ride. All right, cool, I'm hot, so let's roll. Right now I'm on the Stereo TM HPC. We're gonna do this nice little climb. I'm not even on the full high mode where I'm my EMTB. I am firm right now, so it's not gonna be bouncing up and down, but this bike is eating up this trail nice and easy. I like it. All right, so it has the Fox DPX2 rear suspension. You can tell some slight differences uh, from the action team. Mainly it's gonna be in the shifting and the brakes. This one has the MT7s from Agura. Super powerful brakes to get you good to, uh, to get you stopping in no time. Awesome. You hear me shifting through. That SRAM NX shifter is doing its good job. Get this jump here. Nice and smooth. Oh yeah. Bosch is doing really well with this generation four motor. It's doing very well for climbing, smaller motors, 20, 625 watt hour battery pack. We've been out here for a couple hours now and I'm still at 61%. I just upgraded <laughs> to the Stereo Action Team HPC. As you can see, I am in EMTB mode. This 
is all Shimano'd out with Dior XT, uh, the new uh, 12 gears, uh, shifter, uh, the new quad uh, piston, uh, front and left on the Dior XT. Feels so good and smooth. Fully open with this Fox suspension. Oh yeah, picking up some speed. Looks great, feels great. So let's check out these little jumps over here. All right, so we got this first jump coming up here. Nothing too major. Oh yeah, taking it like a champ, this bike. Nice and easy. Woo! Digging it. You guys can hear the suspension. I'm not sure if you can, but it's doing its job keeping the rubber side down. Wow, this bike is amazing. Welcome back to the shop, you guys. So that was our quick breakdown on all of the Cube Stereo Hybrid 160 bikes from this year. Now I will be doing full reviews on every last one of these bikes because I am a completionist if nothing else. But seriously, I think these are some of the best EMTBs of the year. So I want to make sure that you guys are getting all the info on this. So if you want to see those videos, make sure to subscribe to this channel. A couple more things about the stereo hybrids in general. So they are all going to be coming with 27.5 inch wheels, which will keep you a little bit more nimble, a little bit better handling down those hills and into those corners. All of these bikes are going to be weighing in at about 50 pounds. So you're looking at about 50 pounds, give or take a couple pounds for every model. The top two models are going to be coming with the Kiox display and that SL is going to come with a Purion. We've talked a little bit about the specs. I want to highlight a couple things. The action team is going to be coming with the Shimano Dior XT four piston hydraulic disc brakes, which are still relatively new and very, very solid. Really, really nice. The TM model has the Magura MT7 disc brakes, which I think are still very good. The other thing that I would kind of note on this that I thought was interesting is that the TM model is going to have the SRAM NX Eagle on here. Now, I like the SRAM NX. It is more of like an entry-level derailleur, um, but helps keep costs down on that mid-level bike that is otherwise unbelievably specced out. So that TM is going to come with the Fox 36 Performance Fork and a Fox DPX2 in the back. So really, you're getting like top-of-the-line suspension, but you might want to upgrade that derailleur long-term. Not a big deal. I think there's things on every bike that should be upgraded. I just wanted to point it out on that bike in particular. All of these bikes perform very well thanks to the geometry. Again, we talked about the frame composite. These bikes are great. They're really fantastic. I had a blast on them, and you will see my full thoughts when I release the reviews soon. Like this video, you guys. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Also, share the video. If you've got people who are looking at the 160 bikes, Cube is very excited about them, and I am as well. Leave a comment below. Let me know which review you are most excited to see, and then we'll put that one out first if there is a clear winner. Thanks for watching, you guys. We will see you soon.